And good evening. Welcome to Stan Watson Show. I'm your host, Stan Watson. Thank you again for tuning in to our live call-in show. Remember tonight, you can call me at 770-559-2999. After some very, very special guests, you want to call somebody because my first guest is going to be Mr. Cedric Alexander, or Chief Cedric Alexander of the Cab County Police Department. So make sure you call somebody, let them know we're on the air. If you stay right there, we'll be right back. And welcome back to the Stan Watson Show. Again, I'm your host, Stan Watson. Thank you for tuning in again. Remember tonight, call me at 770-559-2999. We'll take your call. Well, I've had a great week so far. It's Tuesday. We had our last commission board meeting today. So if you want to know what went on or what's going on uh, up until the next year, give us a call in my office at 404-371-3681. But it was a great day for us here in Decatur County. Well, as I stated, my first guest is Dr. Cedric Alexander, who's the chief of police for the Cab County. Chief, welcome to the Stan Watson Show. Thank you. For How are you doing today? Great, great. Great, good, good, being here. great, Thank you, sir. great to have you. We had a great time doing the um, uh, check presentation for the Police Alliance today. So thank you for coming to that today. And thank you for that check as well, too. I mean, you being behind that, pushing that for us, and I tell you, it means a lot to the police officers to know well, that wonderful. they have your support and support of the board. And we had a lot of uh, sworn officers today right. uh, the Sheriff's Department, the Marshal's Department. And who else was there today? Uh, uh, it was several agencies Several there, agencies but there. But those are certainly that stood out was the Cab Police Sheriff's Office and uh, uh, the Cab And Marshall's I think I saw Chauncey well. from uh, the city of uh, Stone Mountain. Yes, that's right. So he right. was there as well. And Stone Mountain was present as Excellent. well. Excellent. So we had a great time. Tell me a little bit about you. Where, where are you from originally? Originally, my home is Pensacola, Florida. Pensacola, Florida. And uh, That's the old naval base down there, huh? Well, it still is a naval station okay. there. And uh, I was, uh, I came out of high school in 72, went okay. to school at FAMU for a mm -hmm. while. Okay. And um, and kind of travel out, around a little bit over okay. the years in law enforcement as well, too. But my law enforcement career actually started right in Tallahassee, Florida. In Tallahassee, Florida. That's right. In the state capital, huh? In Tallahassee, Florida. In the state capital. So you left to go to school right down the road, you said, to a FAMU. Yes, sir. Now, did you uh, do undergrad in uh, criminal justice, or how did you get started? Well, when I started out back then, I was uh, uh, started out... On my bachelor's degree, right? Okay. But I dropped out of school. Okay. I got married, and my wife got pregnant at that time, and mm -hmm. uh, so I had to drop out. And uh, make that so, money. Yeah, I had to go make some money, <laughs> take care of those right, responsibilities. Right, right, right. Okay. But subsequently, I was able to get back in school and mm -hmm. uh, uh, went on and finished my bachelor's and master's degree at a small okay. Catholic college there in Miami. And, okay. Uh, and then around the early '90s, decided to go back to school, work on my doctorate. I'm a clinical psychologist right. by training, and. Uh, Got drawn back into law enforcement mm -hmm. a few years later and uh, up in Rochester, New York, okay. and uh, spent some time there in policing and subsequently from there went on to Albany, okay. New York in the state capital. That's the state capital of New York, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Good, good little college office. town, so it wasn't really Nice hard. little college town, <laughs> right? And uh, then I <clears throat> went to Dallas, ended up okay. five years with Homeland Security there, okay. and then here to the Cab County. Okay, so you were with Homeland Security for how long? Five and a half years. Okay. Now, where'd you get your street training at? Where'd you start the process? I started that back in Pensacola, Florida, in Pensacola, on the streets. On the streets? <laughs> and you were, you were in Miami for a while on the streets as well, right? Yeah, I was in the street, but I'm talking about it as a kid, you know, yeah, right, you right. know just messing around as a uh -huh. kid. But uh, uh, my police training started in Tallahassee, right. Orlando, and Miami. Okay. But I tell you, Miami, Dade County, early 80s, very, very oh, challenging, yeah. tough yeah. time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I cut a lot of my teeth uh, yeah, right there Obelaka, in Dade County. Brown Sub, and That's Liberty, right. Liberty City. That was Liberty Highly, City. I mean, it was, ooh, it was tough That's down right. there. Some tough areas down yeah, there. Yeah, I had a lot of friends down there. Well, good to be. Now, how long have you been here in DeKalb County? Uh, actually, officially, I was sworn in on April 1st okay. uh, mm -hmm. of this year. And uh, so I've been here roughly, what, nine months About now? About nine months now, okay. Right. And so have you found it rewarding, challenging, or what do you think? I tell you what, this is a great county commissioner, okay. a great county, wonderful county, 700,000 residents, mm -hmm. 271 square miles mm -hmm. of, uh, of just wonderful space, green land, mm -hmm. and, and communities, and wonderful people I had an opportunity sure. to meet over the last number of months as well, too. Uh, just a wonderful place, That's uh, right. you know, I think to work and to police and to live. And I love the Cab County as well. When you first came, there was no city of Brookhaven. Right. Uh, there was only the uh, new city of Dunwoody with the other seven cities that we have, Latonia, right. Doraville, and the like. 
What have you found uh, the most rewarding or challenging in what you had to uh, have precincts all over the Cab County with the 700 some thousand people? Right. Well, you know, it, it's such a vast county, and, mm -hmm. and I think now we have, what, 10 cities within mm -hmm. the About county? About 10 cities now. Uh, that are incorporated, and uh, we have a great working relationships with each one mm -hmm. of those agencies. Those uh, communities have been around a while, such right. as Decatur, and of course, communities such as Brookhaven, that mm -hmm. is most recent. Uh, we have a great working relationship with them in Dunwoody and Dunwoody mm -hmm. and Chamley and others. Right. And uh, so <clears throat> we all work in coordination with each other. Mm -hmm. Now, being that we are DeKalb Police, mm -hmm. we're a very large police department. Very large, sir. And we actually have an opportunity when called upon to mm -hmm. provide a lot of support to the smaller, smaller agents. Smaller cities as well. Yeah. And because uh, some, you know, we have resources that they may not have. Right, exactly. And, uh, and we proudly. Uh, you know, certainly share those resources, resources with well. them. That's a good thing that we have to do in the care County with our smaller cities. I understand, Chief, we have a call. Caller, you there? Thank you for tuning in to the Stan Watson Show. Go right here, caller. Hi. Hello? Go ahead, caller. Are you able to hear me, Stan? Yeah, I got you. Go right here. Go ahead and talk. Oh, okay. Uh, this is the question for the... Uh, for Chief Alexander. Okay. Uh, the, the question I have for you, I want to say thank you for the for the job that you do in the Cass County, and please don't get discouraged when <laughs> when you all are locking up uh, criminals and like armed robbery or what have you, home invaders, and the uh, judicial system some kind of way is letting them back out on the street. I know it can get discouraging. Please hang in there. Uh, it's, the judicial system is, is, is going to wake up and understand you can't let these people back out on the street. And thank you so much, sir. And keep up the good work. You keep up the good work, too, Stan. Thank you, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for calling in tonight. Chief, you want to respond? Well, you know, thank you, and thank you for calling mm -hmm. in. Because I tell you, you know, the men and women police officers out there doing it mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do arrest a lot of bad people. Right. And unfortunately, sometimes they're young juveniles. The right. law... Uh, is somewhat uh, much more lenient towards mm -hmm. them. And in many ways, mm -hmm. you can understand that. They're right. being juveniles. Mm -hmm. First-time offenders. First-time offenders. But, one of, first offenders. Right. but mm -hmm. one of the biggest challenges we have is that a lot of these young kids are repeat offenders right. over and right. over and over mm -hmm. and over. And we arrest them on numerous occasions, mm -hmm. but we just find so often that... Uh, mm -hmm. They find them, you know, find their ways in and out of the judicial system more, right. more than we would like right. to. And coming in and out of revol revolving doors, so to speak. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, sir. What do we have to do to deal with truancy? How do you how do you feel your department or as a commissioner how we can work better with the school system to eliminate or just curb, you know, the truancy problem we have with young young people going in and out of school? Well, you know, I think one of the things, and, and we've kind of gotten away from this, commissioner. I mm -hmm. think we still got a place responsibility back on parents to the parents at home because you know in some ways we're mm -hmm. taking on too much of the right. responsibility mm -hmm. which doesn't allow for parents yeah, right. to take more responsibility mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if I'm going to be there to do them and pick them up every day oh okay right. the police will pick them up and take them to school right. mm -hmm. but there has to be some responsibility on the part of parents that's right uh, to make sure that their children in school that discipline is appropriate mm -hmm. and in but to leave it up to the system right the system becomes overwhelmed to make the changes to make to the enforce change. it and all that right. kind of stuff right legislate it all kinds of stuff. the system should not be able to do that right uh, what do you think then we have to do with you we, we came someone came to you and said uh, chief Alexander tell me a little bit about your style policing style is it uh, more in the community? Is it lock them up? Uh, I mean, wh what's your style and, and what program did you bring to the Cab County with your vast amount of experience? Well, I think you have to have a variety of approaches mm -hmm. today. Okay. It's not just about locking people up mm -hmm. because you can never lock up enough all folks. The, you can't lock up all the people anyway. You can't lock up all the people <laughs> Not anyway. enough jails, that's right. But mm -hmm. however, you know, how I think about it okay. philosophically is this, is that we want to be able to help people to do better mm -hmm. in their lives. Sure. I mean, and I think that's something that we all want. Mm -hmm. But I, oftentimes, mm -hmm. police are held responsible to do it all. That's right. And police do a lot in terms of enforcement. But really, it's a real community effort. Mm -hmm. sure. And my thoughts are, I'm a pretty conservative law enforcement official. Mm -hmm. That's my upbringing right. throughout my years. I'm from a very different generation. Right. But I think it's important that you pe treat people with respect, mm -hmm. regardless of who they are. Right. 
and and that we're professional at all times. At all times. And even in some of our frustrations, mm -hmm. and police officers are human beings. Right. But even in their frustrations, we have to always make sure that we stay above the fray. That's right. And we cannot reduce ourselves to that of the criminal. And we have to conduct ourselves accordingly. In, in a professional in, manner. In a very professional manner. You had a, a few uh, uh, challenges with uh, some of the officers uh, getting in a little bit of trouble, and I want to applaud you the way you handled it. What was your thought about uh, internal conflict as a, as a professionalism in our police department? Well, we're going to continue to grow to professionalism right. because actually that attitude of what our officers get themselves involved mm -hmm. in, in my opinion, starts at the top. Mm -hmm. I have a zero tolerance, no nonsense policy <laughs> right, okay. that exists with me that's mm -hmm. been part of my career as a leader. And everyone inside the cab police yeah. understand mm -hmm. if you're doing it right, I will stand with you to the better end. If you're doing it right. If you're doing it right. right. Okay. But if you're out there involving yourselves in activities that's mm -hmm. going to embarrass this agency, mm -hmm. get yourself where you're operating above the law, mm -hmm. outside the color of right. law, I have no tolerance for that type of behavior. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be consequences that are going to be investigated sure. and the consequences are going to be very swift. Mm -hmm. And you've seen over the last number of months where we've had to terminate right. people that's and right. I don't have a problem doing that's that. That's right, yeah. But however, <clears throat> I think, that, you know, one thing we have to keep in mind right. is that 99.9% mm -hmm. of the men and women in that department do a tremendous job right. every day. Every day. And I'm going to tell you, they go out, I mean, they go out and they do hard work mm -hmm. and they don't get a whole lot of money sure. for it. Mm -hmm. But they love this county. County. They love the That's police right. department, mm -hmm. and they love public safety. That's right. I've and, seen that. Uh, and I'm going to be there, as you have been mm -hmm. over the years, giving them that support as very best we can and, in this real tough time. And that's very key for us as well. Uh, what, what do we need to do, uh, myself, and you as the administrator, uh, overall the public safety department, what do we have to do to retain uh, our officers? I mean, uh, we, we, we have a great training academy. We, we make them look good. They come out with all the expertise they need to get started on the street, right. uh, all the necessary training, and then sometimes we lose them. So what, what do we have to do? What does the commissioners, what does DeKalb County have to do? Well, I think as a, you know, as a whole, a very okay. basic, fundamental kind of way, we have to let our police officers know when we see them. Mm -hmm. Rather on the street, it. rather than grocery store, mm -hmm. whether we appreciate, we appreciate you them. in a genuine way. Mm -hmm. And I think collectively what we also have to do mm -hmm. is that we have to make sure that they get raises mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they get opportunities to to increase their salary. Look, we know it's a tough economic time right. everywhere. Everywhere. And we know that this county took an amazing uh, hit back in 2008 mm -hmm. during the housing crisis. That's right. The reduction in the uh, tax base mm -hmm. that, that the county now receives. And the officers understand mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. They understand that they've been without a raise for you right. know a few years now. But I know that uh, yourself and others are mm -hmm. working very, very right. diligently to try to bring some, uh, some raises back, you know, to employees. That's but, right. you know, also we're looking at uh, having some take-home cars right. uh, for our officers as well, too, some right. of those kinds mm -hmm. of incentives. Because mm -hmm. what we're competing with, quite mm -hmm. frankly, mm -hmm. us being such a large agency, mm -hmm. we're competing with smaller agencies right. who are having an easier time mm -hmm. being able to buy 30 cars right. as opposed to us being able to buy a thousand cars. A thousand cars, cars if you will. right. And yeah. we have to purchase, not lease those cars That's in right. our budget. That's right. So, <laughs> so, so we're so, not so, leasing police cars. Right. So, so, so it's a much heavier lift sure. for us. But I'm going to tell you, uh, I know that the commission has mm -hmm. been and others have been working very diligently to, to try to find going forward ways sure. in which we can get raises for these officers. But you know, they know that they come into this profession right. not going to get rich. Right. Uh, but as much as anything else as well, too, I'm going to tell you, they still go out there and they and do, do a job. dynamic job and for and you I agree with every that. day. For every day. This, Let this me ask you this then. Do you think uh, working with our colleges and universities here in the county, uh, maybe um, training uh, college courses would, would help retain our officers? Well, absolutely, because, you know, many of the officers, of course, Many of them have degrees coming mm -hmm. in, two-year degrees, four years mm -hmm. degree. We have a number of officers with master's right. degrees. But any kind of educa educational opportunities sure. that they will have, mm -hmm. they see that, that it enhances their skills out mm -hmm. on the street, mm -hmm. and it enhances their resume and their idea of moving up through the ranks mm -hmm. with the more education sure. that they have. So 
I think it's a great idea to mm -hmm. make sure that we keep uh, uh, a workforce that is well That's informed right. and very well educated as well. And too. with the experience. Talk yes. a little bit before I let you go now about uh, your level handedness uh, in policing. I've seen you work in South Dakota. Right. I've seen you in Tucker. I've seen you in Brookhaven before it came to, became a city. I've seen you at Briarcliff. Tell me, tell me how you able to handle the crowds of, of problems that we have when we go to town hall meetings and you almost have the same message for, for Briarcliff that you have for South Dakota. Right, right. Well, the problems are the same throughout the community, <laughs> okay. regardless of mm -hmm. where you go. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes when you, you know, and you and you and mm -hmm. I who mm -hmm. have attended mm -hmm. those meetings mm -hmm. together, people have the same, some of the same sure. issues, the same problems. People are concerned about the public safety for right. themselves, for their family, mm -hmm. for their children and friends. Mm -hmm. And people want to feel safe. In each one of those communities, there is one thread mm -hmm. that runs through all of them. And what's that one people thread? People want to feel safe. Safe. They yeah. do. They want to feel safe. That's a good, so a good idea. So the, the, at the end of the day, we all want to make sure that we are supported by, mm -hmm. our, by our police department, right. which is just as diverse as this That's community. True. That's true. And our delivery of police service is the same, same. for everyone. Everybody. Okay. And uh, I take a lot of pride in that, mm -hmm. and we work very hard and very and diligently you, to deliver that. I've seen you to demonstrate this. I just wanted the public to see it. Before I let you go, tell me your relationship with the faith-based community. Uh, I have a close, very close relationship okay. with them in the time that I've been here. Actually, over the last several months, I've called a number of uh, clergy together mm -hmm. uh, uh, from large churches, small churches, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. mediocre-sized churches right. throughout this community that has formed a coalition to work with each other, to work mm -hmm. with the community. Sure. And we created a uh, youth program that we okay. refer to as Right Choices. Right Choices. And many of these churches are part of that program and it is very simply, it's an opportunity for children who live in the neighborhoods sure. or go to school in the neighborhood of those churches, mm -hmm. have an opportunity after school uh, to once or twice a week go into those schools mm -hmm. and receive some homework help, mm -hmm. uh, personal development, sure. uh, anything that can enhance their skill sets yeah, the young to be there. better citizens. Mm -hmm. okay. And it takes them off the streets for right. a couple hours as well right. too and give these kids uh, something to do. So we have some churches where where uh, Right Choices is already sure. in, play, in play and we have some churches that, as we speak are developing those right choices okay. programs in their communities That's excellent. as well too. And I keep saying but like a Baptist preacher before I let you go, I uh, want you to give a general number. Somebody out there is watching the TV show tonight and I know that they are and they have uh, maybe a, a complaint or have a uh, encouraging word for you. Uh, not your cell number but a number they can call <laughs> and uh, after you do give them the number, why don't you do a closing statement let everybody know uh, in the Cape County how you like the county and, and, and uh, if they have any problems give you a call. Well one thing I can't do it, I don't memorize numbers anymore. <laughs> Because I use my cell phone like everybody call else. Call a general number. <laughs> Call a general number, whatever that okay. number is. And in fact, I don't even remember my own number, oh my goodness, to okay. be honest with you. Uh, okay. but, but let me say this in regards to the community. Yeah. Uh, 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 this is a great community. Great Cab community. County is a mm -hmm. great community, and it has great sets, assets and resources. Mm -hmm. And those assets and resources are really the citizens of this community. That's right. And as this community is rebuilding itself and uh, moving forward into the 21st century, mm -hmm. I tell you what, uh, I love this county, love the police sure. department and the opportunities that we all have here. I'm quite sure we all need to be reminded not to take those kinds of things for, for granted. granted. This is an absolutely that. outstanding county with such great potential as we go forward. Excellent. Well, wonderful. Well, our first guest has been uh, Dr. Cedric Alexander, better known as Chief of Police in DeKalb County. I uh, hope that you enjoyed this segment. We're going to take a quick break. I promise you, if you stay right there, we'll probably show back up on your TV set. Call somebody, let them know uh, that the Stan Watson Show is on the air. We'll be right back.
And welcome back to the Stan Watch Show. Thank you again for tuning in to our call-in show tonight, 770-559-2999. Hope you enjoyed that first segment with Dr. Cedric Alexander, our chief of police here in the Cab County, who's doing a fantastic, if not wonderful job uh, with our troops and with our staff here in the Cab County, doing an awesome job. Well, we're back with our second guest, and this Note Cloud Network, and I'm joined by Mr. Aaron Robinson and Genesis Ellis, who's the chief operating officer, is that correct? Yes. I met you guys and I was just fascinated with what you were doing. Uh, I think you got a great idea. I think I told you if you embellish it a little bit, you guys are gonna be millionaires. So I wanted to bring you on my show first. So Yay. when you make the first million, I can get two hundred fifty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to make sure. It works. Uh, tell me about your company. Uh, tell the um, audience about your company. Mm -hmm. Well, long story short, um, No Cloud Network is an online social community that allows students that are in mm -hmm. the arts, um, mm -hmm. dance, band, orchestra, chorus, and theater to pretty much audition for scholarships online. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, currently, students are traveling to the college and universities mm -hmm. via, via car or mm -hmm. plane. We want to eliminate that. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of families can't afford to travel to these colleges, so that's lessening their opportunities. Mm -hmm. So what better way than have the internet, uh, which is a median for everyone. You know, It's the best way to have that connectivity. All right, so now how do I, would I audition? I'm at um, Towers. I'm sorry, Stevenson. OK. I'm at okay. Stevenson High School, right, and uh, I played trombone. And you tell me about your, your services, and I want to audition for um, uh, Langston University. Okay. Well, tell me how that would work. Well, right now, um, you'll actually go on our site. Mm -hmm. You'll pretty much look at the college profile. Mm -hmm. On the college profile, have all the outlines of the audition requirements. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're in. And you've gotten this from the schools themselves to get yes. the requirements. Yes. So you've done a lot of the research. So when they come to you, you already got the research for that particular college most absolutely, of the time. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, almost like a uh, dashboard of this is what they're looking for. Absolutely, okay, go absolutely. Ahead, go, go right they'll, they're pretty much being in chronological order. Okay. Um, once they get to the college profile, of mm. course, before that point, they create a profile themselves. Mm -hmm. um, just they like, create a profile with you. Right, right. Okay. Create a profile mm -hmm. with us. And they begin to the process. Mm -hmm. um, they go over the requirements. They mm -hmm. then record themselves literally on our platform. Okay. And then uploads it to our platform. And okay. at that point, the school can be able to see it mm -hmm. and be able to say, okay, we like this student and okay. pretty much adjudicate them. So that you see a picture genesis of the yeah. person, you see them actually performing or playing a, a rendition of some sheet music or something right. like that? Right, sight reading. Okay, and, okay right. all right, and how does that work? 
Well, what they would do, we would have our requirements and the um, audition requirements up. Mm -hmm. The students will look on their, uh, the underneath the school that they will want to audition for mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. their instrument, and then they will go by every requirement that the school will want. That particular school would have. Yes, Absolutely. Sir. What are some of the requirements of a school? Say a, a historical black college uh, and university band versus a Georgia Tech or a Flagler College down in Florida. Right. Well, or Rollins College somewhere. Right. Some schools have um, schools of music, so mm -hmm. their process is a little bit more lengthier. Okay. They require like an interview. Um, HBCUs. So, so you got to be able to talk a little bit too. Absolutely. They want to talk to you, not just picking up the horn and playing and playing percussion. Right. Absolutely. They want to talk to you. They want to make okay. sure you're a good representation right. of their okay. program. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and, and just like other any other school, like mm -hmm. HBCUs, mm -hmm. um, just like them as well, they, they want to make sure that you're a top candidate. Their process is a little different because they don't focus on just music majors mm -hmm. or art majors. They focus on students that are majoring in other things but mm -hmm. still have that talent. To play in the band. At absolutely, least, okay. absolutely, okay, absolutely. Right. Now, who, who are some of the schools that you have on the umbrella? Right now, uh, Clark Atlanta University was okay. our um, first institution. Uh, okay. Dr. Sharon Willis's department chair. That's we, here in Atlanta. Yes, here in Atlanta. Atlanta. Right. Yeah. Um, and then after that, we currently have um, a couple of schools from different locations. Um, mm -hmm. We're working on North Carolina and to University, mm -hmm. um, Bethune Excellent. Cookman, um, mm -hmm. Florida A and M. They just the got marching men of Cookman. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, the marching yeah. women. Yes, and yes. women now. Yes, yes. back yes. in the day, it was the marching men of Cookman. Right, 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 right. Um, Dr. Wells is doing an amazing job. We went and visited him uh, for the Florida Classic. Okay. That was pretty great. Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty much it. Um, our whole entire goal is not to focus on HBCUs. Mm -hmm. We want to focus you on every school. Spread, absolutely. Right. That's why I said Rollins and all these small Kennesaw State that have, you know, absolutely. Uh, quartets and sometimes even jazz bands and orchestras. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So now, if I was a student and the contact you, is there a price for me to do this online or something? Yes. Um, we charge an audition fee, um, okay. which is um, pretty little to nothing um, okay. compared to what students. This is for the student. Okay. So the yeah. student would pay an audition fee. Right. Okay. All right. Go right. ahead. Um, it's which is really not bad compared to what they're paying now. Um, mm -hmm. The margins for them having to go to these schools, get on a plane or get on a right, bus to go to the right, school to right, audition. Right, yeah, right. Right. I can do it online. Now. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Um, right. We charge students uh, twenty nine ninety nine to be able to submit a video. I like to college like infomercial. Twenty nine ninety nine. I remember that. Okay, infomercial. Yes, okay. yes. Um, uh -huh. And that pretty much allows them to have that um, direct communication with that with college that director. Absolutely. Now, what's the quality of your your um, uh, tape or your your audition, when you, are you doing it uh, uh, via online? How are you doing it? Tell me how you're doing it. Well, right now, um, we're doing it um, pretty much through our own built platform. Okay, but um, I won't have to come to your studio to get it done. Do no, it? you don't have to come have to, to our studio. Okay, right. Right. Um, we are putting things together with our team. Uh, we're discussing doing actually live locations to where sure. the students can actually okay. do a better That's quality video. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll have different um, partners that are partnered with us. Mm -hmm. okay. um, we're going to try to get in touch with like Ken Stanton and mm -hmm. um, a lot of different music stores to try to maybe okay. have do a connection with them. So That'll can... be great and coming actually to the music store. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So we know what the char charge is or the fee is for the student. Now, how, how the college is benefiting besides getting a uh, great student that they, they, they can just look at it online. Are they helping with the challenge of bringing you know you revenue from the college level yet? Well, what we're doing for the colleges, um, of course, them it's all about marketing, mm -hmm. um, getting to those students that pretty much want to go to that school mm -hmm. or don't know what school they want to go right. to. Mm -hmm. um, we're offering them marketing packages mm -hmm. for them to be able to pay us to market to mm -hmm. the colleges. Well, different right. students that are so you asking colleges. the colleges kind of to pay you for a marketing package. Absolutely. Now, when you Absolutely. say a marketing package, is that like a a portfolio of uh, the horn section of, of, of people they may be looking for? Well, key positions on our website. Okay. Um, everybody will have a profile um, mm -hmm. equally, good, but good. the goal is to pretty much prioritize in certain spots. Um, mm -hmm. If you're a school and you want to increase your enrollment, mm -hmm. there are certain spots on our website that everybody sees. Okay. So our goal is to pretty much position those and mm -hmm. offer those out to different So if I, if I go on the page of 2999, uh, do I have access to get on the line to then do my uh, video and you tell me what time I play and how long I have to play what kind of music I have to play because this is what they're looking for. Yeah. Right. Well, the twenty nine ninety nine pretty much covers um, being able to um, submit your your video audition, right. right. get Absolutely. the requirements, right. 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 and um, we're still working out different. Okay. Um, different prices and everything but um we are they that will give you the the notice of what it is that you have to audition and how you audition mm -hmm. and you can submit and that will give you a solidified date of when you can audition okay. and everything like okay, that okay so i can pay online with credit card or check yes or PayPal? Yeah. well pretty much paypal um okay. online credit card okay now what, what's your background I, I know this but tell them what your background is um well, I guess I'll well, <laughs> um, well, I graduated from South Point High School. Mm -hmm. I was in dance. Um, I went to Valdosta State, mm -hmm. took up business management, mm -hmm. um, and then I was going to Gwinnett Tech for a little bit and taking up okay. business management. So. Excellent. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you've done the college thing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and, um, 
my background is I graduated from Stevenson High School. I'm that's, a Jaguar. Why, that's why I changed my tower to Stevenson. <laughs> that's why I did that. Okay. Yes, um, I am an alumni Jaguar. Um, right. Pretty much my foundation for everything I've done today. Um, I pretty much went to Georgia State University and mm -hmm. American Intercontinental. Um, focused on um, accounting and totally different from what I'm doing now, right. um, which is criminal justice forensics. Right. Um, right now, currently, um, I'm teaching at Stevenson High School as a mm -hmm. percussion director, working mm -hmm. with the students hands-on. Um, mm -hmm. Music is my passion. I love right. it. I right. love it. I eat, sleep, and breathe it. So. Right. Well, and, and the Jaguars and Southwest DeKalb, don't get me in trouble, mm -hmm. have done an awesome job of sending kids away to a uh, major institution. Absolutely. Uh, in music and not just um, uh, the marching band, right. but some great orchestra and jazz ensembles and those kind of things. So Absolutely. It's great. Absolutely. Well, good. So if anybody want to get in touch with you, because you got a great product, I'm telling you that yeah. when I saw this, I said, I thought about the days when people started looking for basketball players and baseball players, right. and they could go and get a video, and I could send them my you know, live shot of what I'm doing, how right. the jumper looks, and you guys doing it with music. Right. right. So I want the uh, students that may be watching or the parents to watch okay. uh, tonight, uh, give them information how they can get in touch with you. Um, definitely. Um, we have our website. It's www.notecloud.us. It's N-O-T-E-C-L-O-U-D. Dot U-S. Okay. And then also like us at Facebook at Note Cloud Network. And then on Twitter at, uh, at Note Cloud Network, O W. RK. Yes. WRK, all yes. right. WRK. Okay, got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's like work, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, where you guys will want to take this before I let you go? Um, the goal is to pretty much take this globally. Um, mm -hmm. I'm currently about to work on a project with Universal Studios in Japan. I'll be there for 10 really? months next okay. year. So my chief operations officer will be doing a lot of um, the work here the in the chief United States. Chief operating officer. Yes. Yes. Okay, gotcha. um, Genesis, okay. Our, our goal is to pretty much just take this globally. We want students to be able to understand that um, the arts is, is a lot more involved into our everyday lives sure. than we think. Um, even right now as we're recording this show, um, mm -hmm. you have staff that put together everything behind the scenes mm -hmm. and we want to focus on all different genres of sure. the arts and okay. pretty much let them, you know, let them make it work. Yes, Absolutely. we have a couple of events coming up. Oh, tell them about the events. Yeah, yes, sure. we have, um, coming up this Friday, we have yes. an event at Stonecrest Mall. Yes. Okay. It's okay. our gift wrapping event. Okay. Our proceeds will go to Stevenson High School okay. uh, Sonic Sound. Which mall again? Stonecrest, Stonecrest Mall. Okay. Stonecrest December mall. 13th through the 24th. Through the 24th. Okay. Yes. yes. And so then you'll be wrapping gifts? Yes. Absolutely. We'll be Absolutely. up there trying Absolutely. to get some, you know, little special guests with and music. And the, the proceeds will benefit the... Stevenson High School drum line. Yes. The Jaguars. The Jaguars. Yeah, the Jaguars. Got to get back. I'll take care of that. Well, yes, got to get well, back. Good. Well, I think you guys have a fabulous uh, program, a great company. I just want you to go ahead and work on it and get it right so you can go ahead and make that first million. Uh -huh. yes. But also you're helping people, so remain humble as you help people to get into the uh, different colleges and maybe, you know, further their career in the music industry. Absolutely. And so, you know, make sure that works. I'm looking forward to uh, you guys doing great. Thanks. And if I can help you do anything, let me know. Thank you. Thank right, you. Well, we appreciate you. Not a problem. It's been uh, Mr. Aaron Roberts and Ms. Genesis Ellis with Note Cloud Network. Two young people doing a great job. Call them, see what they're doing. Stay right there. You're watching Stay and Watch the Show. I'll be right back.
Welcome back to Stan Watson Show again. I'm your host, Stan Watson. Thank you again for tuning in to our live call-in show. Remember, tonight our number is 770-559-2999. We'll take your call. I hope you liked that last segment. Those were two young people that I met a little while ago. I think they have an excellent product, uh, excellent marketing uh, plan. I think they have something that will help the community. So if you can help them, uh, make sure you give them a call. If you didn't get the number, call my office tomorrow at 404 371 3681. We will take time to give you the information for uh, Note Cloud Network, and that was Aaron, Aaron Robinson and Genesis Ellis were their names. So we're back uh, from break. Now we have Mr. Mike Howard, who's an author and motivational speaker. Welcome to the Stan Watson Show. Thank you. Thank good, you. Good. It's Tell my pleasure. Where are you from? Uh, Atlanta, born Atlanta, bred. And I tell people when I die, I'll be Atlanta dead. Oh, uh, so he'll be over <laughs> six feet on that Oakland Cemetery. Huh? Okay, what high school? Went to a school back then. It was called Murphy High School. Yeah, that's on the cusp of uh, DeKalb in Atlanta. That's right. It's, uh, what is it called now? Uh, Krim High School. Krim High School. Absolutely. After the old uh, superintendent, Mr. Yes, Krim. that's correct. Uh, who were some of the people in your class? Cause that's a historic school. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Richard Dent. Now, uh, see that? Actually, yeah, that was one of the mm -hmm. individuals. Uh, he right. just went into the Hall of Fame, right. Super Bowl MVP. Right. So uh, I had a lot of great people that came out of the, uh, Murphy David High Burgess, I think, was another one that came mm -hmm. out of it. I think David went to Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. uh, it was somebody else. Um, uh, New York Jets. I uh, had a guy uh, played line, but I cannot remember I his name. I can't remember. You guys had a great school. Though. Oh, yeah. Oh, great yeah. school. Now, you have been in, out of school. You're now an author and motivational speaker. Is that right? That's, that's now, correct. Now, how long have you been doing this? Full time, about 15 years. I used okay. to work for IBM in the space shuttle program. Okay. And I uh, did that for about 15 years. Okay, so what's your degree in? You said the space shuttle program? Yes, yes. Okay, so you were an astronaut, aspiring, what were you doing? I was a computer Aeronaut programmer. Computer uh, programmer, okay. My degree is in computer science and mathematics, and mm -hmm. I was good back then, you know, the first time. Aeronautical science, you said he was good. <laughs> okay, all right, I got you, okay. But, uh, you know, now I'm programming people and organizations for okay. success. Computer programmer now. People program. That's right. All right. Now, how did you get started on the kick? You just got tired of the corporate world, or what happened? Well, uh, a little bit of that. Got tired of people telling me when I can go on vacation, <laughs> when I can get sick. But uh, but more so, mm -hmm. I wanted to make an impact. Okay. And someone That's invited me out one day to speak okay. uh, to a group of young people, and that was when this thing started. Okay. And someone they kind of lit the fire. That lit the fire and got okay. this ball rolling. Okay. Yeah. And they gave you a tape, and was it a tape of somebody we know, or just? Oh yeah. Uh, well, uh, you may know the name, guy by the name of Les Brown. Oh, yeah, Les. Uh, from me, around here every now and then. Oh, yeah, gave yeah. me a little motivational tape. Right. Uh, and it was a cassette tape, so mm -hmm. that was old school. You <laughs> uh, said cassette tape. Cassette okay. tape right. that mm -hmm. I listened to. But mm -hmm. you know, the funny thing about it, Stan, mm -hmm. when someone gave me that tape, mm -hmm. I procrastinated. Mm -hmm. It sat in my didn't, car. You didn't listen to it? Not initially. It mm -hmm. sat in my car for about three months before I decided to listen to it. Really? Okay. And you know procrastination is yeah, assassination yeah. of mm. motivation. That's right, that's right. one day I listened to it and I listened to it over and over and over and that tape changed my life. Okay, so what came first, the motivation of speaking or the authorship? Uh, the speaking. The speaking. The speaking, the ability to go out mm -hmm. and transform people's lives. Now, but let me tell you how it started. Okay. First it started with me changing my life. Mm -hmm. I okay. started to listen to that tape and listen mm -hmm. to something that was a little different. Mm -hmm. And I said, wait a minute, hold on. It mm -hmm. gave me a whole new mindset. Mm -hmm. I began mm -hmm. to look at life 
not looking at the obstacles, but looking at the opportunities. Opportunities, right? Uh -huh. That's good. So it found so you, changed you know, my life. A positive message. It sounds like you're having with the motivational speaking at the start out. Yes, a positive message. But what happens along with that positive sure. message? We give people the tools, tips, and techniques to change their lives. Mm -hmm. Because see, you can be motivated, mm -hmm. but if you don't have the right habits yeah. and the right skills to go with it, okay, it that's that's right. Share with, with us then some of the uh, tools and techniques. Okay. First of all, let me just say this. Mm -hmm. We've got to recreate our, 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 our thinking. Mm -hmm. I call it the shift. So kind of not only shifting, but reshaping the thinking. Reshaping the thinking. Okay. Thought mm -hmm. replacement. Let me okay. give you an example. Thought replacement. Okay. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. And you, you got to work on yourself every Your day. day. Mm -hmm. Every day. Mm -hmm. Because we are under mind control. And when I say mind <laughs> right. control, let me tell you what I mean. Have been, yeah. Yeah. We think that success is overnight, mm -hmm. but it's over time. Mm -hmm. We That's think right. that it just happens, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. Not instant. No, we think it's like television. Oh, 30 minutes and mm -hmm. hell, it's time, right, it right. changes. <laughs> right. But success mm -hmm. is a process. Mm -hmm. But we've got to get rid of the old thinking. Right. Thought replacement. Let me give you an example. Okay. Complete this. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we win and sometimes we lose. lose. Mm -hmm. That's the old thought mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. Let me give you another What's process. What's the new one then? Okay. The new one. Okay. Sometimes we win, mm -hmm. And sometimes we learn. Mm -hmm, that's right. The difference in learning and losing mm -hmm. is our attitude. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me give you one more. Okay, all right. Good things come to those that they say wait. wait. Right. That's mm -hmm. what they say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you're going to be extraordinary, you got to create. Good things come to mm -hmm. those that create. That's right. So when I work with individuals, I say first of all, you got to change your mindset. Mm -hmm. You got to work on so you. So now I'm mostly, so you sound like you're also doing a little life coaching too. Oh, absolutely. Hello. Okay, right. Absolutely. Let me, I want to know that. we've okay. been conditioned to mm -hmm. think a certain mm -hmm. way. Sure. I see people walking around standing right now. Oh, the economy is bad. Mm -hmm. No one is hiring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, but see, that begins with your 10 mindset. 10% chance of rain. Yeah. <laughs> but hey. I mean, 90% is it? <laughs> right. Will, it probably won't have sunshine. Exactly. Right, 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 right. But you, okay. you got to realize that mm -hmm. if it's meant to be, it's up to you. Yeah, right. I wake up and I read something I have on my wall every day. Mm -hmm. This is what it says. It's mm -hmm. simple. Okay. I am mm -hmm. a creator. Mm -hmm. I am a creator. You're a creator. You I own, create your own destiny, my uh, destiny. Positivity. I create my posit I create my environment. What do you say, Mike? Everything. How do you do that? Mm -hmm. By when I wake up in the morning, mm -hmm. I read something positive, mm -hmm. something inspirational. I surround myself mm -hmm. with the right people. Not being <laughs> negative and, and those kind of things. And then your, your mm -hmm. friends or the colleagues are not negative people. Mm -hmm. These people are, they have positive attributes is what you're saying. Absolutely. Oh, that's, that's awesome. That's now, right. is your message uh, then when you first started and, and to now, mm -hmm. were, were your uh, guidelines strictly with young people or have you elevated to be a life coach uh, person with uh, adults? Who, who are you? Who's your audience? When I first started, I started in the schools. Okay, all right. With, Most uh, people do. That's oh, why, okay, yeah. You know, because the kids are now, you know, if they, if they don't like you. Off the like, chain. <laughs> He's not going to say that. They off the chain. Yeah. Okay. And if they don't like you, mm -hmm. look, they're like, oh, we don't like him. But if they like you, <laughs> hey, we like him, bring mm -hmm. him back. Right, right, right. Good. But I started off in the schools, and then some teachers and principals saw me, mm -hmm. and they brought me in to speak to the staff. And it Excellent. grew from that. Excellent. So now I'm working with corporations, associations oh, from your State awesome. Farms, your IBMs, mm -hmm. uh, Xerox, City of Atlanta, government, oh. major corporations. Back in corporate, corporate America, but in a uh, different realm. In a, in a different realm. I you like know, that. I like teaching that. leadership, That's team good. building, mm -hmm. customer service. Mm -hmm. I developed one of the top customer service programs for Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International mm -hmm. Airport. Okay. Top running program for mm -hmm. seven years running. This Seven years a, running. This is a this is a young man from East Lake Kirkwood in the hood. <laughs> but I tell you, it doesn't matter where you come from. He's the question East is Lake what? Kirkwood where you're hood. going? Where you're going? That's right. Doesn't matter. That's right. You got to have a vision. Right. You know. And once you have the vision, you got to be about growing. This is right. what I want your people to realize. Mm -hmm. If you're not growing, mm -hmm. and if you're not learning, sure, someone else is, and exactly. they will pass you by in this game. I tell life. people that all the time, especially with our computer and technology skills. Yes. Tell me a little bit about your book. I know we know you started motivational speaking. Now you're an author of a book. What's the name of the book? The book is called From Ordinary to Extraordinary. Ordinary. That's a good name. Success mm -hmm. begins within. Mm -hmm. And I always ask the question, sure. what separates the ordinary from the mm -hmm. extraordinary, mm -hmm. the winners from the whiners, the contenders from the pretenders? The winners from the losers. <laughs> right. It begins with him. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we did, we said, okay, sometimes okay, people so are intimidated mm -hmm. about reading. Mm -hmm. And I realize this, mm -hmm. the formal education will get you the job. Mm -hmm. But the self-education oh, will get you ahead. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I said, okay, let me put together a small book that's powerful. Mm -hmm. So what I did is that I put a lot of strategies and quotes from the world's top achievers, and okay. I put stories at the end of each page. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, 
the story of mm. Michael Dell. Dell mm. Computers. Dell Computers. Okay. Started right. his business with less than one thousand dollars, and mm. now Dell Computers is a multi-billion-dollar corporation. Mm -hmm. Out of his dorm room, mm -hmm. the story of Farrah Gray. Mm -hmm. Farrah Gray grew up in the housing mm -hmm. projects of right. Chicago, mm -hmm. but he made his first million dollars by mm -hmm. the time he was 14 That's years awesome. old. So this book actually gives you those uh, uh, attributes of those persons with a uh, great, uh, not only following, but a great start. And they, they started being very positive in their life, and they didn't have a lot, to, it seems like, to start with. Absolutely. Okay, before Absolutely. I let you go, I need to tell me, what's this Attitude Mondays? Oh, Attitude Mondays. It's a show that we do, and it started <laughs> a, he in got my excited, mind. Though. Let okay. me tell you, it started in my mind. Okay. Be before someone even gave me uh -huh. an opportunity to do the show, I tell people, you got to see it before mm -hmm. you can be mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And even before I had the opportunity, I was in the mirror working on my show. <laughs> And I would get in the mirror. This is your motivational you. moment. So you got in the mirror working on your own oh, show, my TV show. I was. So when the guy approached me, I said, I've been waiting on you, but I will be in the mirror saying, I'll be in the mirror. Mm -hmm. This is your motivational moment with Mike Howard giving you the inspiration and motivation Mike Howard, needed right, to create okay. a positive transformation. Today's message, you don't have to be great to get started, but you got to get started if you want to be great. I like it. I like that. I like that. Well, that's wonderful. So now, you, how long have you been doing both now the motivational speaking and the uh, the authors, I guess? 15 years, full time. Oh, that's great. Time. 15, 15 years, full time. 15 years, making a difference. Okay. And let me tell you the part that I like about mm -hmm. this, Stan, mm -hmm. is that when I go out into places, I sure. was at Walmart, mm -hmm. and a young man walked up to me, mm -hmm. and he said, are you a speaker? Mm -hmm. I said, yes. He said, well, you don't remember me, mm -hmm. but you will come to the alternative schools. Right, okay. And so you remember will that. speak at the schools. He said, now, when you came years ago, let me be honest. Mm -hmm. So the main reason I came is because you had free pizza. <laughs> <laughs> you enticed them and encouraged them to come in. All right, okay. But he told me, he said, but okay. your words resonated. Mm -hmm. And I said, what are you doing today, young man? Mm -hmm. He said, I'm a minister. And I was talking about you about a year ago. Awesome. And he said, those words that you spoke to me are the Great words testimony. that I'm speaking to other people. Excellent, excellent. Well, look, I got to get out here, but I want them to uh, get your information because they want you to come and speak to young people or adults or to corporate America uh, here in DeKalb County or in Metropolitan Atlanta. Give them a phone number and a website to get that done. Absolutely. You can contact me. My office number is 770-436-0638. Again, 770-436-0638. And if you would like to order my book, you can go to the website and you can order online at Success Begins, B E G I N S, within, W I T H I N dot com. Again, that is Success Begins, B E G I N S, within dot com. And I tell you what I'm going to do, Stan, okay. as a special gift to your viewers. Mm -hmm. The first five people that order, I will also include one of my motivational CDs. All right. So if you order the book, I will include my motivational CD for you free of charge so that you can begin to transform your mind. Because Excellent. in order for you to be it, you got to see it and you got to hear it. Excellent. Well, all right. Our guest has been Mr. Mike Howard, author, motivational speaker, life skills coach as well, and doing an awesome job. You can just tell by his voice that he's excited about what he's doing, and that's going to be awesome going down the road. Well, stay right there. We'll be right back for the last segment. Thank you for tuning in to the Stan Watson Show. I'll be right back. We going to celebrate. Want to give you a little information. I've started my toy drive. Uh, our Christmas party will be December 22nd over at the, uh, I think it's the CAC building on Flash Shows Parkway, but you can call my office at 
371-3681. You know that you have to bring an unwrapped toy to make it work for us. And if you don't bring an unwrapped toy, you know we're going to charge you to get in as well. We have great music from Antonio Bennett. And I may have a special surprise from a renowned violinist. He's a male. You might know who he is. I can't tell you who it is. But we're working on him as well. So this December 22nd, we're starting our toy drive for our December 22nd Christmas party, our annual red and white Christmas party. This is our 15th year, so I need to make sure you guys come out and see me. We need to make sure we have a lot of toys for our needed kids. Well, my next guest is Mr. Charles King. Charles is a musician. Uh, Charles, welcome to the Stan Watson Show. Now, where are you from, Charles? Macon, Georgia. Macon, Georgia. Oh, he better sing. He got it. Oh, man, he got <laughs> sitting in the morning. I mean, he got it ready to go. We're uh, we going ready to go. How, how long you been here in Atlanta? Uh, I'm, I've just come up here to visit for your show today. Oh, really? Yes, and sir. so you still live in Macon? I do, yes, You sir. guys have a great show most of the time with, um, uh, I think it's Senator David Lucas does a little show down there every, every uh, Labor Day. Uh -huh. Have you ever been a part of that down no, there? No, sir, not yet. You know who I'm talking about, though? He yes, does sir. A, the Labor Day classic down there? Yes, sir. Uh, what's your style of singing? I know you got acoustic guitar with us today. You, yes, sir. You're a folk I'm, singer? Or? I, I am, I call it urban contemporary Christian music. Urban contemporary, okay. Yes, sir. And so the little jazz, a little gospel, what is it? It's, it's, it's a lot of uh, jazz, uh, some, a little bit of rock. A little and, bit of rock? Uh, yes, sir. A, little, okay. a lot of soul. Okay, how long you been doing this? I've been doing it since I was nine years old. So nine years old. Yes, sir. How'd you learn to play the guitar? I'm um, self-taught, and I kind of picked up from uh, some other musicians. Okay, and you've been doing it for how long now? Uh, for over 10, 12 years. 10 or 12 years. Okay, what are you gonna do for us tonight? I'm gonna sing a song I wrote called "Destined to Survive." Destined to survive. Is yes, it something sir. that you wrote yourself? Yes, sir. And if you had to put it in a category, I hate to do that, but I'm gonna put it on the shelf okay. and put it in to play. I mean, where would I play it? Uh, it, as far as the genre? Yeah, is it contemporary? Is contemporary, it, Christian okay, contemporary. You know, Christian contemporary. I just want to know where it was, 102.5. I know where I was going with this. Gotcha. Uh, so it's contemporary <laughs> kind of gospel. Yes, sir. And it's a song that you pin yourself. Yes, sir. And tell me one more time again the it's name of the song. Destined to Survive. Destined to Survive by Mr. Charles King. Listen and enjoy. Sometimes I want to give up, put my hands up, Lord, take this cup from me. I can't seem to get it right and do it right. What is wrong with me? My spirit is thirsty and my soul is hurting. Frustration is beating me down. The things I don't want to do are the same things I used to. Frustration is beating me down. Hey. But there's strength deep inside of me. He pushes me to keep fighting. And I got to get up from here. For my breakthrough is almost right here. Keep pressing, keep pushing. I can make it, don't lose it, keep striving, keep fighting, I can win, this won't break me down, gotta be strong, gotta carry on, can't give up, keep holding on, you can do this, you are chosen and destined to survive, yeah. There are times the way gets hard And life will leave some battle scars But yet will I trust you? Cause you know how to comfort me When I face my adversity So through these tears and all my fears I'm running, I'm drawing near Keep striving, keep fighting, cause I can win. This won't break me down, gotta be strong, gotta carry on. Can't give up, keep holding on. You can do this, 
You were chosen and destined to survive There were times I know I came so close to throwing it all away All the pain in life, the darkest nights I even found it hard to pray But I've come too far to give up now So yes, I'll stand my ground For a greater is he that's within me And he I find my destiny No matter what you're facing, you're destined to survive. Hey, keep pressing, keep pushing. Keep striving, keep fighting. Don't let it tear you down, no. You gotta keep holding on. You were chosen and you're destined to survive, yeah. Oh, 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 I'm destined to survive. I'm destined to survive. Help me sing it out. Oh, 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 I'm destined to survive, yeah. I'm destined to survive, yeah. Oh, 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 I'm destined to survive through the storm and rain. No matter what we face, we're destined to survive. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I'm destined to survive. Destined to survive. Yeah, yeah. Pressing, keep pushing, I can make it, don't lose it. Keep striving, keep fighting, I can win. This won't break me down, gotta be strong, gotta carry on. Can't give up, keep holding on. You can do this, you were chosen and destined to survive. 